Hello everyone, and welcome back to my RP1 career in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. Our two newest Kerbals, Sebastian Serrano and Nancy Faber, completed their proficiency in Mercury and now are training for their mission. However, they both completed their proficiency in Mercury at the same time because I queued them up for that training at the same time. And right when they were done, I queued them up for the mission training. And yet, for some reason, Sebastian is taking a lot longer. So maybe being a scientist causes the training to be longer for the mission as opposed to for the proficiency because uh, proficiency they seem to take the same amount of time um, that's just a theory about why it's taking Sebastian longer than Nancy for the training for the mission uh, in either case the next person to go up is probably gonna be Viola again and she's got complete on July 7th however before then we have the arrival of our Mars mission to take care of. So yeah, we will focus on that focus on that first and then worry about the crewed missions. Prior to actually launching the crewed mission, we of course have to launch the docking target. We won't actually dock the first time, we just need to rendezvous. Um, we also have some geosat well, we've got one geosat that's being built. I might put it around the moon instead of around uh, Earth because we need some more comms around the moon for the far side landing mission. So I'll think about that. And then we could have a pack of smaller satellites in a lower orbit for Earth as well. We'll just have the two geosats and a bunch of smaller sats in a lower orbit. So that's what I'm thinking. Uh, but let's get on to our Mars mission arriving for a flyby. Okay, well, we have a problem. Uh, this is still outside of Mars SOI and it doesn't appear to have comms anymore. It's got electric charge even though it's facing the wrong way. I can't fix that right now. It's sort of trying to point at Earth, but Earth has gone too far, it looks like. I think we only tested it for 150 million kilometers, and that might be more than 150 million kilometers. So, we're still gonna fly by though. <laughs> um, uh, but it did say transmit science, didn't it? Well, shucks. Even with the tracking station upgrade, huh? Oh, well, the tracking station upgrade hasn't finished yet. We're still in the process of doing it. Looks like we needed it after all. And in more of a hurry. Yeah, well, we're not going to be able to increase the work rate enough for that. Not in a few days. And I don't think I can launch like a super powerful satellite to communicate with it within the next day either. Oh well, I guess we'll see it fly by. But it won't do us any good. Okay, our periapsis is on the nighttime side of Mars anyway. We should probably just do it with the orbiter. I mean, we should just try to make orbit and we need a much more powerful antenna. We also need an orbiter for Venus that's next up. So we will try for... But I guess we can't pick up the orbital contract until after we did do the flyby contract, so that's a little bit inconvenient. But we might as well try for orbit anyway. <laughs> no, no reason not to, if we can. Actually, we already have tech level 4 antennae. So, it looks like, even with a tech level 3 ground station, uh, this antenna can communicate from Mars, even at the maximum distance, and certainly from Venus. Oops. Yeah, so we are already good as long as we turn our antennas into level uh, tech level 4 antennas. Um, Power-wise, they active, they take less than the tech level 3. Idle, they take more. But going to Venus, that's no problem. I'm configuring the Venus satellite, the Venus orbiter now. Refined aluminum grid tanks. Well, do I really want to tool them all again? I think that's just a marginal improvement. I think we can just go with what we've got. We've got mature avionics now, though. 
not that much of an improvement. We'll have to think about which avionics we really want to upgrade. I don't think we need to do that for now. Taking a look at though, I mean, if we really want to get into a nice tight orbit, it wants 7,000 altogether, about 4,000 for ejection and 3,000 for insertion. I think that's just to a very tight orbit, so we might not want to go all out like that, but maybe it's safer. Oh, we can up the tech level of our solar panels too. Okay, well I've decided to get a one-ton core up here with the mature avionics deep space, but, you know, it's a very marginal improvement, and we've moved the three-ton core down here, so they're still carrying that, that's the old one. And altogether we might have gotten 200 meters per second out of that. So I don't know about that. But, and we have to tool this new core, but I'll just go ahead and do that. We'll build that as an EVE orbital launch, but maybe I should just use a Deneb with boosters and really make the whole thing big as a backup. So we'll have one of these, and then we'll have a bigger one. Okay, so this is going to be the EVE-2 on the Deneb A3, and it uses the double tank for the Gamma-2 slash Large-2. Um, and so we end up with about 6,500 meters per second in this whole stack instead of the 5,000 that we had with the EVE-1. And so that's a lot closer to the 7,000 that they want, probably enough to make orbit. And we do have the experiments here. We're using the double controller configuration so we have the mature avionics and I use the one ton controller up here again and we have the five ton controller down here that's the old one without the mature avionics and so yeah we've got added tanks here because uh, I've tooled that tank and I decided to add some more burn time to boost this up to one ton basically since that's our capacity and yeah but we're not using the launcher to capacity here which is troubling. I think it might be time to finally unlock the RZ-20, but we'll build one like this, and... Okay, I will unlock this. We do have a lot of unlock credit, apparently, uh, so... I'm planning to use that on the space plane, so... We will give it a workout so that I can accumulate some data points on something that doesn't carry a Kerbal does have an upgraded version that has 425 seconds of ISP, that's nice. I don't know how long it takes for us to get that, but... Okay, Hydrolox pumps 100,000. These things add up. Uh, anyway, so we'll build one of these. This will be the EVE 2, but we're going to have to upgrade the pad and everything to make a EVE 3 with the Hydrolox engine. And let me see what I can do with that. But yeah, let's have one of these. Okay, so I've got the EVE 3, which is making use of the RZ-20, the Hydrolox engine that we now have. And in order to make use of it, we actually duplicate the second stage tank and make it our third stage tank. So we're getting rid of both stages that had the Gamma 2 slash Large 2, uh, which is a shame. And we may revise that later, depending on how these guys do. Uh, but we've got two of them here. And... Uh, they are, of course, Hydrolox engines, and they have 10 ignitions in theory. Uh, so our hope is that they can complete orbit, loiter. We do have the MLI layers. I put all 25 on, and then boost us over to Venus. That's a long shot, but this does have more Delta V altogether than the other uh, version, the EVE-2. Uh, we expect that it'll take less than 2,000 to complete orbit and then it can do the rest. I mean, it should easily be able to handle the transfer on its own, and then all 3,294 meters per second in the probe can be for mid-course adjustment, and then capturing into orbit around Venus. Of course, it's got the one-ton controller up there. Uh, this still has the old 15-ton controller here, uh, but because it's a 2.04 meter form factor, we put it at the bottom instead of at the top. Um, that just seemed like the better way to go. We upgraded the RCS to MH and Mon 3, so we have MH and Mon 3 tanks there. 
uh, we might want to make those bigger. Uh, but no, that's, I mean, because we are loitering in orbit, so that's complicated. I've oversized the fairings up here just for future payloads, and I did tool the fairings, so these had to be tooled and those had to be tooled. And overall, I think we have about 700 meters per second more than the other version. And of course, because the upper stage can reignite, we're using all of the delta V of the rocket. Um, uh, you know, because otherwise we'll be dumping delta V in one stage or another. So, uh, this is a little bit more efficient, and we'll see how it goes. But of course, we don't have data on the on the new engines yet, so that's going to be a problem. And staging is a problem right now too. Let's make sure everything is okay. Yeah, but I have no idea why propellant GSE is okay. We haven't used Hydrolox yet. <laughs> um, uh, I I don't recall. There being hydrolocks here. Is there hydrolocks here? There's no hydrogen here. So why is propellant GSE okay? This tank has hydrogen. There's no hydrogen. Why is propellant GSE okay? I don't know. But it doesn't give me an option to renovate. So what's going to happen? Yep, no idea. Why does it think it's okay? Eats me. So, fine. Save and we'll build it. It didn't complain. We'll find out, I guess. Viola has just finished training, so we will launch the target. And then once it's in its orbit, uh, we will launch Viola, hopefully. And we can do the rendezvous. Let's roll out the Ariana docking target. It's the dark rocket again. All right. Okay, that's not going this time. SAS on. Yep. Throttle is up. And... I guess... Ignition. Been a while. And launch. We're going just straight out, of course. No need to make this rendezvous challenging. Okay, booster set. And everything set. Uh, we'll probably go into a higher orbit. Make it easy. In theory, this should be able to communicate with the Geosats. It's got the 40 decibel meter one. Well, there seems to be an indication of a line. Yep, between us and that geostationary satellite right there. So that's working out. Yep. Okay, well, we'll sort of have an ISS-like orbit. We're tossing it a little bit high up here. And hopefully we'll have communications to deal with that. Okay, separation. That's why I was checking the geostationary satellite too. Okay, let's activate everything. Well, we have plenty of comms around here. Okay, our docking target is in place. Fairly high orbit for the rendezvous. And we'll position it so that it recharges. I'll just have it do kill rotation and hope that's going to work out. But it always seems to change. I don't know, should I put persistent rotation in here? Because persistent rotation always held the rotation with respect to the sun. Yeah, but I don't know if all the kerbalism or, oh darn, the solar panels are sort of floating out there. Um, all the other stuff is going to work with persist persistent rotation or not. It wasn't recommended. Um, it used to be recommended for realism overall. So I don't know. Anyway. We'll leave this be for now, and I guess we have to launch Viola to it. Okay. Well, shoot. <laughs> Alright, I don't think it'll do any good, but, well, might as well. Let's see. Ariana docking target. Well, relative inclinations, negligible. 
we could probably just go ahead. But maybe we can wait until it's closer. We don't want to have Viola on the pad for a day, right? <laughs> um, what? Is that bad? Okay, in the interest of trying to make this easier, I've had her sitting out in the pod for a day and, well, she seems happy anyway. So, we'll see if we can do this. Throttle up, SAS. Oh, okay, this is still all wrong. Okay, SAS on, ignition. We have all the things, go. It's really dark today, though. Now she looks worried. Okay, now that we're past the speed of sound, Viola looks less concerned. Inclination is good. Okay, booster switch off and separation. Okay, station. Well, it's going to end up being a little bit behind us, so we're probably going to go a little bit higher even. So I'm already letting my apoapsis go a bit. Okay, ignition of the larches. Good timing there. This time there shouldn't be any issues making orbit or anything like that. We've got the balance a little bit better. Okay, we're gonna dump the stage. And we should eventually, because we now have a higher orbit, should be able to do that just fine. Yeah, it uses a lot of RCS to hold steady. These are imbalanced as well. It's annoying. Viola has 4% stress. Hanging out on the pad probably didn't help. Okay, well, let's just wait. Okay, just barely in render range there after this 19 meter per second correction, but that'll be good enough. Okay, we are getting within a kilometer, in fact. Closer than 100 meters, relative speed less than 0.5. Well, that will all be 100 meters. So all we have to do is slow down in time. There it is. Well, we might as well just slow down and get the whole thing done. Hopefully. Okay, it's happy. Uh, we could nose to nose with it or try to dock with it or whatever, but I think we have done what we came to do. Well, we're going to drift pretty close. Okay, let's let's not get that close. Time to focus on returning home safely a bit. Uh this might not be a bad time to the orbit actually. Yep. Oh, I'm in favor of deorbiting now. Definitely should just use one engine, if even these little thrusters are going to have this much imbalance that the RCS has to puff that much to hold it. But of course, with the docking port there, we had no choice. 
So a little bit of charred blader is actually on the pot itself. Wonder if going back from this apoapsis is safe. We tend to use all the ablator on the heat shield. <laughs> or very close to it. Yeah, I want to do a little burn to make sure that our re-entry isn't too harsh. That it's from 300 kilometers instead of 450. Okay, that'll do. Fuel up here still seems fine. Same within the pod. Okay, separating off the stage. All our RCS is already active, but... Okay, off it goes. Okay, we are in the atmosphere. We will be landing in the dark. We're also getting the other one. Oh, we already got the other one ready for docking. So it's already got the docking port and everything. So one of our new Kerbals will get to do the first docking, hopefully. Lots of tiny RCS puffing, apparently. Not actually much being used. Just showing that it's active. Okay, flame effects. Let's not do fizz warp. But yeah, we pretty much lose all the ablator on the adjustable heat shield each time. So that's why I didn't want to go too much higher. Where are we? Volcano's well, there, so we're definitely in South Africa. I mean, you know. The southern part of the African continent. Okay, parachute is good. Okay, recover vessel. Alright, so... Retirement changes no earlier than April 17th, 2001 for Viola. On leave until November 11th, though. Alright, no science for that business, but... Contract fulfilled. Seems like it's gone. Okay, check marked, and so we can finally pick up the first docking. I presume both of them do not have to be new vessels here. And then there's still first EVA, which again we can't do with this pod as far as I know. Alright, so next time we will try that. And let's see. Probably it'll be Nancy Faber, who's a pilot, and she'll be ready in 13 days. So alright, with that, thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed this video, if you did please do press like, if you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.